Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. All right, welcome everybody back to Believe in the Eagles. The Eagles are heading to the NFC Championship game. They're going to play the San Francisco 49ers, and we are breaking it all down for you here on Believe in the Eagles. I'm, of course, is your host, Mike Gill. Jamie Lynch is with me. If you're from the Philly market, you recognize Jamie. He'll tell you a little bit about where, uh, what he's doing now, where he's been, and how you know him. But we're going to talk Eagles and Niners here on Championship Week. Jamie Lynch, welcome to Believe What's in the up, Eagles. What's up, Mike? Uh, thanks for having me on, buddy. Good to uh, finally do a, a little bit of a, a media segment with you. I've been hearing your name for years, and we've never had the chance to uh, do anything together. So great to be with you. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to uh, the next uh, 20, 25 minutes or so to kind of uh, hear what you think about this game. First off, tell everybody where they can find your work now. What are you doing and where you've been? Yeah, so ever since uh, my career trajectory changed in October, uh, I had to wait until mid-December before I could get back in the game a little bit. And uh, the people at Bet Parks gobbled me right up, and uh, I launched a, a daily 20, 25-minute kind of, um, you know, your basic storylines in the Philadelphia and kind of bigger national stories, how they affect gambling lines, a little bit of gambling, uh, so an all-encompassing kind of 25-minute daily podcast Monday through Friday. It's available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Spreaker and all that good stuff. Uh, and it's been a blast. I'm having a really good time doing it. Well, let's uh, – I want to get – like one of the things that I think is interesting about this game is Eagles win. They're blowing the Giants out. Then you're watching Cowboys on your couch, Cowboys Niners, and you get to kind of relax game were you cheering for someone in that game did you have a preference yeah I did I wanted Dallas um because I think they're the easier team to beat San Francisco when you look at it I mean if you talk about a steel versus steel matchup the way they match up the 49ers and Eagles they I don't want to say negate but they go right up against the Eagles strengths and the Eagles strengths go right up against the Niners strengths so this is going to be a clash of the Titans on Sunday I think the equalizer there is kind of Brock Purdy. And can he be the first rookie quarterback to ever win a conference championship game? I don't think so, but we'll see. But to me, the Giants and Dak Prescott and, the, and his turnover issue lately was the much easier opponent. So I wanted Dallas. And then you throw the rivalry on top of it, and it was just going to make for a great week. Jamie Lynch, do you know the four previous losers in the I, championship game? I think I can do this. All right, so the tough one, Sean King. There you go. Uh, then you have Roethlisberger, Sanchez, and Flacco. There you go. Four for ding, four. Ding, ding. Yeah. Four for four kind of day, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you got Purdy. He would be the guy. This game feels like so much Keenum coming in here. Remember that year Keenum was like an MVP candidate. Like he was yeah. having an amazing year. And then all of a sudden, I feel like this game is either bloody knuckle fight. I don't know who wins or Eagles blow them out. And it's like the realization of you prepare all year, you get to this moment, you're a, you're one game away, and then what ha what didn't happen all year for you happens, the interception, the fumble, something, and then you look up at the scoreboard and you're like, how did this happen? It just run rattle. And I feel like you see this in big games all the time. Like TCU gets blown out. I don't think that they're that far in disparity. I think it's just you lose it. It's what happened? Yeah, they ca they caved on themselves a little bit. Yeah, and, and um, I think that happened to the Giants, where it's like I think the talent disparity was there, but you don't see blowouts like that. I think what happens is the realization of we're just not good enough on this day. They're just better than we are, and then you just get blown out. Yeah, I think uh, Kansas Kansas was playing Baylor the other night, <clears throat> and they caught Bill Self on the bench. Go, we're not as good as them. He he mouthed it to himself, and there is that moment. I think it happened when they went up fourteen nothing. It almost happened when Goddard kind of got that first touchdown and just beasted his way into the end zone where the Giants went, ah, I, you know, do, are we good enough to be here? And hopefully that yes, happens to San out. Fran. Out. Yeah, hopefully Purdy has that rookie moment where maybe a couple guys just go, oh, is this where Brock Purdy becomes the seventh round draft pick? Um, hopefully you can put that doubt in their head. If you do that, game's over. Yeah, uh, Jamie Lynch, three things I like. Let me see if you concur, all right? One stat that sticks out. 
20 or more air yard touchdowns. Eagles are number one. They are the yeah. best team in the league when it comes to big play touchdowns. Big play touchdowns defense, San Francisco 27th in the league. Mm, Eagles have like shots that. down the field, man. I think the Eagles take shots down the field and try to set the tone early. And the one guy, I got a name, all right? Go go Quez Watkins on you. Quez oh, Watkins yeah? is the all scary right. guy. Every four or five weeks, you feel like he kind of <laughs> disappears. He had a 91-yard catch. Remember against the Niners last year, they called him at the goal line. But he snuck behind him. One of those sneaky little plays, I think, could be a big early difference maker. So that's one thing I like. How about you? Uh, I, I, I'm looking at Devontae Smith again uh, because if you're a nerd like me and dive into the DVOA numbers um, from football outsiders, which basically most people don't care about, but it, it equivalates to uh, war in baseball. Versus number one wide receivers, the Niners are fourth best in the league at shutting down the number one guy. But when it comes to the number two wide receiver, they drop all the way down to 18th. And Devontae Smith is not your typical number two receiver. So I think there's a really good chance he has a big game again on Sunday. I like it. Um, all right, number two for me. Three things I like. Uh, Jamie Lynch is with us here. Um, number two, all right, that I like here is Hassan Reddick. Big ticket items. I like big ticket items, having big games. He did it last week. That was a total mismatch with Evan Neal. He took his lunch money and stuffed him in his locker. Yeah, you don't see that in the NFL. Mike McGlinchey's in over his head this week. So Reddick is a matchup problem. McGlinchey's good, local guy, but this is too much for him. Local guy versus local guy. Temple, right? Uh, yeah. McGlinchey, and Matt Ryan's guy. cousin. Yeah, uh, exactly. He got sent uh, horizontal on Sunday by Micah Parsons. And Hassan Reddick kind of got – he got job today, not being a defensive player of the year uh, finalist. Look, all three guys on the list that made the finalists are, are, are studs. It's hard to say they don't deserve it. But Hassan Reddick, I mean, come on. The guy deserved the nod this year. He's been an absolute monster. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I like Hassan Reddick versus McGlinchey a lot. Uh, McGlinchey knows what he's walking into. He's walking into a stadium that's going to be absolutely nuts. It's going to be hard for them to hear counts and – uh, all that cadence and stuff. So, yeah, I love Hassan Reddick versus pretty much anybody in the world right now. <laughs> yeah. Except uh, maybe Lane Johnson. I don't like that, that one. up is two, three. The Eagles interior. No one talks about interior line play. That's as boring as you can get. But sure. Kelsey, Sayamala, Dickerson, they win games for you. They, I thought, were a difference in the Giant game. You can game plan between the guard center gap if you're Philadelphia. And I think the wide nine problem – because these three guys in the middle can win. So the Eagles interior, I think, is something that San Francisco hasn't seen all year. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, when you look at last week, uh, you know, Dexter Lawrence, one of the, the hottest, you know, defensive tackles in the game, all pro caliber player. I didn't hear his name once on Saturday night, and that's because he had to go up against Jason Kelsey and Landon Dickerson. And good luck. I mean – you know, it's kind of we almost take offensive line play for granted in Philadelphia because we've been so spoiled by it. Uh, but Jason Kelsey hasn't let up a sack in over a year and a half. Same can be said for Lane Johnson. He's not interior, but two fifths of your line haven't allowed a sack in a year and a half. So we're, we're pretty much spoiled by by how great our line is. All right. Let's get kind of uh, philosophy thoughts on these type of things. Fans love the hot team, right? You're the hot team. You got to play good. The Eagles yeah. did not play good football since week 14 they have not played well so they were not the hot team they kind of debunked like i need to be the hot team they came in and played their best game the giants played their best game the week before they were the hot team and they were horrible the next week so how much stock do you put into do you like san francisco's won 12 in a row and does that say man they're really playing well they or is like it inevitable that they are bound to have a bad game yeah, I kind of love the position where the Eagles were at because they weren't the hot team because Jalen Hurts wasn't playing. You know what I mean? Like, he came in that last week. You could tell the game plan was just do the simple stuff and don't re-injure yourself. Uh, so they didn't really do anything, and they kind of fell off people's radar. They needed to kind of impress themselves again last weekend, and I think they did that. So it's almost like they got some losses out of their system. They fell off people's popularity radar and then they snapped right back to form last week. Um, so, you know, in, in my mind, they only lost one game because Jalen Hurts missed those two games. So I think they're the hot team still. 
Um, I think they just needed a reminder last week to convince themselves of it. And I think they're right back to being, I mean, San Fran's a, a beast, you know, like they're a hot team, but they have a rookie quarterback, Mr. Irrelevant walking into South Philadelphia in late January. I think that can be the great equalizer here. Uh, that story is unbelievable. Are we about to see, this is two ways to look at this. Um, him break down and finally be the Mr. Irrelevant or we're just seeing the beginning of the next yeah. NFL story. Every 20 years you get like, right. That's the cycle. Is this the next like Tom Brady? This would be even more amazing than not Tom Brady story. If he like goes to the Super Bowl and wins in his rookie season, he would have started five regular season games, second fewest of all time. And he would be the only Super Bowl quarterback who was a rookie. So are we looking at that? Or are we looking at the other story? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, a seventh round pick that that, that would be typical Philadelphia Negadelphian uh, in all of us to think that we're going to get the next Tom Brady walking into the link, wouldn't it? Um, right. I, Is it I worse tend... than Jake DeLome or Brad Johnson? Where's oh. he stand on the list? Yeah, I mean, this Niners roster is better than those teams, but I I, I got to think we're we're going to see reality come to form here. Uh, you know, I don't think they've played a team of the caliber of the Eagles since Brady's been quarterback. So I think reality is we don't get the next Brady story. We just get a guy that's really good uh, because he has made some big throws and he's been really good for the Niners. I've watched a couple of their games down the stretch here, uh, and that's a pretty offense. I mean, I, I want to give Purdy his due, but that Kyle Shanahan offense is pretty, man. He makes things pretty easy on the ground game and through the air. So. You know, I think reality is uh, he finds himself, uh, you know, losing on Sunday, uh, but it's a great story. Uh, he's host of the Daily Odds Pod. Over under 25 throws for Brock Purdy. What do you got? Hmm. I'm going to go over uh, because of the way they use Samuel and McCaffrey in the passing game. They're both kind of like running back wide receiver hybrids. Uh, so I, if I had to think... Uh, Kyle Shanahan's going to want to get the ball out quick. He's, you know, with this Eagles defensive line and the 75 sacks they put up, uh, I got to think he's thinking two and a half seconds on a lot of these plays. So I, I, I would take the over on that. Uh, which receiver, San Francisco, Kittle, Ayuk, Debo has the most receptions? I'm going to go Kittle. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Kittle there, there. yeah. Too. He's, yeah, uh, I mean, he's a stud, and I like the guy, oh, too. You know, it's a shame. Hard not to. Yeah. He built me in fantasy for, like, the first 10 weeks, but Purdy, like, <laughs> re-energized him. It was amazing. Purdy yeah. uh, really um, really brought him to life. But, uh, yeah, he he bothers me, too. Who has more touches, McCaffrey or Debo? I'm going to go with McCaffrey. He's, yeah? He, they've, they've been feeding him, yeah. Uh, I feel like he's getting, you know – probably around 22 touches, you know, something like that between the run and pass game. I mean, you got to feed him, but he is beat up. Uh, you know, he's got, a, I think, a, a knee tweak and a hamstring tweak. He's got two things that are kind of yeah. tweaked. So, uh, you know, if that starts to bother him, maybe Debo takes the reins, but I think they're going to pound McCaffrey into the, into the ground. Uh, if you could switch defenses personnel, would you? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I'm filled with it, man. It's, it, we're not stopping. <laughs> I probably wouldn't, uh, just because I think the Eagles' secondary is about as as elite as it comes. Um, I mean, I'd love to have Warner or Bosa or Greenlaw on my team, uh, but no, this Eagles' defensive line. I mean, 75 sacks. They had the most sacks on four man fronts in the NFL. Uh, you know, number one and number four rated cornerbacks versus the other teams one and two receivers there's nothing not to like about this defense and that's why the eagles are just a complete team there's really not many holes we're not used to saying that as eagles fans uh aj and devonta or debo and Ayuk. oh uh so debo is the ultimate weapon i mean you can use him as a running back a wide receiver half a tight end i mean he's a beast I would probably take the Eagles just because I think AJ is more that true, uh, you know, number one wide receiver. And Devontae, look, he's he's a number one on a lot of teams in this league. Uh, so I would go there. Ayuk and Samuel are nasty, though. Uh, that's yeah. a nice consolation prize. 
Yeah, I liked your stat earlier about the number two receiver. I think the Eagles are equipped on corners. You mentioned Kittle. He bothers me a lot. Uh, yeah. How they use Debo. The big check mark is Hurts over Purdy. So I want to talk about Hurts and get your take because I don't know where you stood on him last year. I went back and forth, people on Twitter, because I said, I am willing to give Hurts another shot. And it wasn't like, I'm not going to sit here and say, I saw this. I didn't. But I saw enough last year that I said, I'll give him another shot because – I didn't want to trade for one of these veteran quarterbacks to give up my trade capital. And I also didn't want to draft one of the quarterbacks in this year's draft. So I said, with all that, I'll give her another shot. And my reasoning was, I feel like what gets lost in the sauce with a lot of these guys is they're in or whatever. We know he had that the will and want and desire to get better. So I wanted to see what he thought his deficiencies were and then what player he came back as. And if he came back as the same player, then it's time to move on. Getting A.J. Brown helped, by the way. But that being said, sure, he was – I think what made him what he was is right now, he is an elite decision maker. It's uncanny. Like, if he had 500 plays this year, he might have had way more. I'm just saying. I'm giving a round number. 500. He made the right decision on 487 of them. It's yeah. unbelievable. Like, he reads three levels of the defense on every play. So that, to me, is the difference maker in this game. He can neutralize the Warner linebacker situation because he can read them and figure out what to do. He can neutralize the Bosa stuff. I feel like he can neutralize their strengths. Yeah, and that's uh, – well, let me admit here, I've had the weirdest uh, trajectory with Jalen Hurts. Uh, I was – I feel like the only person in Philadelphia that supported the draft pick at the time. I loved them coming I out of the – I the draft pick, by the way. I was yeah. – I, I thought it was know, around I, early, you know, but in hindsight, I used to in do hindsight. the show with uh, with Broads was my co-host down here, sure. and we battled on that one. He hated the pick, and I said, "Look, if you value that position as much as you do, they value backup quarterback more than they do starting safety." Yeah. Plus, you had thoughts on when uh, kind of teetering. I understand the pick and if the in, and, and the injury the history down, there. With Wentz. Yeah, if you yeah, drift sure. in the second round and, and Wentz is a perpetual MVP candidate, that's a different story. Oh, I mean, he's going to be the greatest draft pick in Eagles history if he stays on this course. Um, yeah, so, like, I loved him coming out, and then what I saw last year, I went, ah, uh, his decision-making isn't there. So I got to admit, I was all in the Russell Wilson uh, go for it because I thought the team was good enough around him this offseason. I didn't think he was going to take this stride. Now he's taking this stride and making me eat my words – uh, so I loved him coming out, loved him as a rookie when he wasn't playing, started playing. I went, yeah, I don't think he's got it. Uh, reacted too too hastily. And uh, good thing I wasn't GM this offseason because I would have <laughs> been given Russell Wilson money. Were you a Howie hater or like where do you like? I feel like I'm the only voice in the Delaware Valley that was like, dude, I have no problem with Howie Roseman. You make mistakes. I get it. But I will take him 10 times out of 10 to make a trade manipulate the cap are you going to miss on a draft pick and be pissed off about it thousand percent but everybody misses on draft picks it's frustrating when it's your guy and the obvious guy is right there but i was never a howie hater where do you stand on that i i've been team howie since the beginning uh but i will admit after the carson wentz debacle i was on philadelphia airwaves saying it's probably time to wrap it up and go just because wow. How, how many GMs do you see survive, you know, three different go abouts? Uh, you know, what was it? Four head coaches he went through. So there was a, a time, but I'm mostly Howie. The only problem I ever had with him was his draft picks. And it seemed like he wanted to be the smartest guy in the room and didn't want to listen to his scouts. Uh, I think now he started listening to his scouts and he started shopping in the SEC. How about that? The SEC, they produce good football players. Yep, absolutely. Listen. And I always said, he, you could be critical and say he's made mistakes. Oh, that was bad. I never said the guy's perfect, but I'll say what? I would trust him to make a deal than almost any other. I love the guy. You get the callers and the we, – we we don't take calls. I take texts. I can't talk to people because I go nuts. So God bless <laughs> people who take calls all day. I do take a lot of texts, and I'll respond to the text. But he's not a football guy. I said it many times. If his name wasn't Howie Roseman, you wouldn't <laughs> care as much, right? The guy, the, the way he looks, you just don't like him. Because you don't perceive that he played the game. He's not a football sure. guy. I would take a guy who didn't play the game to make a deal 10 times out of 10. The guy who plays the game sometimes is too close to it. 
And that to me is like, John Lynch has done a great job. They're playing San Francisco. Sure. How did he make the decision to trade three picks for Trey Lance? Yeah. Like that, that's... You're out thinking the room. You're, you're too close to the situation. Now you just said Roseman's out think the room, but I think he learns from those mistakes and maybe Lynch does too. But like, to me, it's not drafting is very important. It's probably the most important. But the other areas that the Eagles, he has hit a home run on every single free agent. It's unbelievable. So yeah, I mean, when you look at the additions this mistake is coming. Yeah, just look at the additions this year. I mean, CJ Gardner Johnson would played at an all pro level, led the league in interceptions. Who else, Jamie, who Hassan else Reddick, AJ that? Brown. Who else makes that trade for Chauncey? It's like an under the radar kind of deal. Like, who makes that trade? Like, I you don't see that that level of trade from anybody else in this league, barely. Yeah, and I don't know why other GMs answer the phone when Howie Roseman calls about a trade. The only one that jumps off the page to me as one that he swung and missed on was DGB for Dennis Kelly. And that's only because <laughs> Dennis Kelly played and was a starter there for like four years, and cool. DGB sucked. But at the time, the desperation at wide receiver was real. DGB was the top high school you know, recruit coming out, so the talent was there. So you take a shot on an offensive lineman you didn't need, but that man doesn't lose trades. Uh, he rarely misses on a free agent signing. Um, so, yeah, he's he's pretty great at his job. It's a good pull. Uh, I asked this question to get us somewhere. Um, whose roster is better? 53. Did Howie Roseman build the better 53, or did John Lynch build the better 53? Who you got? I got to go Howie Roseman just because, just because of the quarterback right now. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is better than Jimmy G. I think he's better than Trey Lance. I think he's better than Brock Purdy. It's the most important position in sports. Uh, when you stack up, you know, all the guys having career years this year, all the all pros, all the pro bowls. Um, it's hard not to say this is probably the most elite Eagles roster I've seen in my life. Question mark. I don't want to come off hot takey there because those Reed teams were pretty nasty back in the day, but they always had a hole. It was always Mark Simino or Levon Kirkland or, uh, you know, uh, Mark who's the it was a good pull. <laughs> yeah, who's the safety I'm thinking of? Uh, uh, Considine. There was always some kind of uh, Achilles. Kind of <laughs> yeah, there was always an Achilles heel somewhere. And now, you know, the the positions they historically lack at mostly is linebacker, cornerback, and wide receiver. And he plugged all three holes there miraculously and and their strengths now so i think yeah. this is the most complete eagles roster probably of my uh, you know adult life i would concur i think this is better than the 17 team same uh, and other than that i mean yeah they had some good andy reed teams the 04 team was really good but you mentioned that they're, they're you know um are you always a gannon, the whole. are you a gannon guy or were you ready for him to go how can I not be? The guy's got a top three defense. What do you people want from the man? Listen, I've heard people, like again, full disclosure, Jamie and I have never done a show together. We've never met before. No. We've spoken on the phone a handful of times. But uh, many people have said, I would love to see you and Jamie do the show. You guys think a lot alike, yada, yada, yada. Sometimes that's not a good show. Yeah. I don't know. But um, I don't have a problem with John Gannon. I think the defense, I say, you don't not like John Gannon. You don't like today's game. Yeah, probably. I mean, Steichen and Gannon were phenomenal. What what else could you want from your coordinators? Uh, both are sought after head coaches. Gannon's him and Mike Kafka are probably going to be the finalists down in Houston, if I had to guess. Uh, I mean, when, again, when you bring in C.J. Gardner Johnson and Hassan Reddick, two guys into a new system that played at the level that they did, that's good coaching to a degree. You know, most of the credit goes to the player, but you got to look at the coaches there to integrate new guys into a new system that seamlessly. Yeah, the Eagle John Gannon hater guy hopes that <laughs> D'Amico Ryan's out foxes Gannon this week so that Ryan's does it. Or the, the, they, he want, they want Gannon to get hired, so they want, like, uh, D'Amico Ryan's uh, defense to, like, you know, uh, play terrible so that Gannon get – like, they think this game is, like, the, the whoever's yeah. defense – is going to get hired for that job but yeah and i think uh, it was albert breer said they're going to go hard after vic fangio if he gets hired away well, so he's the same defense by the way yeah yeah i mean he's a disciple of fangio so it makes sense they have the players for a system uh he's interviewing in miami as we're recording this by the way yeah i saw that this morning um 
Yeah, you just this NFL coaching interview process is so weird that they do it like while they're preparing for games and yeah. it's just it's a it's a it seems like it could be a better streamlined the process. NFL coaching thing. I don't know where they decide who we want to interview and who's attractive, but I don't I know. know why owners and GMs say a guy is very good at scheming and calling a defense and that would there make him a good head coach. Like why do teams lose games? Not because they're not good play callers or good schemers. They don't know how to manage the clock. Like, that's what it comes down to. Dan Quinn is a great coordinator. He's 43 and 42. Horrible clock manager. Yeah. I don't understand, like, why. When you see a head coach on the sideline, there should be a little mathematician standing next to him telling him, wait, it's all time out. Like, that should be 100%. Like, my buddy is a math wizard. And he will tell me, right, got to call timeout, got to call timeout. Like, he knows exactly <laughs> when to call timeout. I don't know why teams don't have a guy like that right next to them. Or why would anybody expect a defensive coordinator or an offensive coordinator to also be a clock management wizard? Why do we think that that guy is going to be good at that? I don't get it. Yeah, it's a it's a strange thing. And, and you speak about clock management. I mean, Kyle Shanahan uh, has has a couple ghosts in his closet there. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a crucial thing. I mean, look at Andy Reid and how many times it bit Another him one. over the years. I, he's one of the greatest modern day coaches ever, and it it just plagued him. And it's like wh- to your point, why why didn't you have somebody up in the box that was just your time management guy? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, JB Lynch, few more. Uh, average ticket price. I saw four hundred and sixty eight dollars. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got the money to spend like that, congratulations on all your success. If you have money to spend. Are you? Yeah, I guess. Spending it? Like, do you? Are you a go to the game guy? Uh, I prefer watching at home on my seventy-five inch TV. Um, I, I'm obsessed with scrolling Twitter during the game. I love seeing the fan uh, reaction to the game. I love the replays on a typical Sunday. I love having the red zone on the side TV. Uh, I do love going to games, and when I lived in South Philly. A lot of times I would go down tailgate uh, and then just take an Uber home for the game and be home for kickoff. That was the best of both worlds. Because the thing I like best about going to the games is getting in the lots early and hitting the barbecues and tailgates and uh, all that stuff. But no, I'll, I'll take my TV nine out of 10 times. Same. I, I, I actually would like to bring the TV to the lot and just sit in the lot the whole game. Listen yeah. to the the crowd although that might give away what's about to happen yeah a little bit of a delay there you know what's coming (laughs) uh daily odds pod favorite bet for this game you got one yet uh i don't but uh, given that the i haven't dove into the you know player props and stuff yet i'm gonna take the eagles i do are you okay are you do you look at the line as an insult uh no um because I think that three-point home field advantage thing is kind of a little bit flexible. So a half point to me uh, doesn't really say that that's incredibly in the favor of the Niners. I think when it opened at two, that was great value. I hope people pounced on the minus two. It's two and a half now on most people um, on bet parks. It's two and a half. I don't think that's an insult, no. Um, I do find it a little strange. I think they should have been minus three, maybe minus three and a half. Uh, I think there's a lot of San Fran love, just like there was a lot of New York Giant love last week, and we all know how that ended. Uh, two and a half as we speak. Bengals, by the way, back down to one. That was all over the place. It I love I love the Bengals. I, I smashed the Bengals on Monday. When so, it was at one, I said, I'm getting in on the Bengals. I think the Bengals have been the best team for the last 10 weeks. They're, I mean, Joe Burrow, there's no doubt he's the second best quarterback in the league anymore. This Josh Allen stuff, yeah, great player and all. I'll take Joe yeah. Burrow any day over him. Uh, before we roll, uh, three favorite Eagles stories this year. Ooh, um, I think you got to go Hassan Reddick coming home wow. to the link where he played his college ball and playing at an all-pro level. I think that's phenomenal. Jalen Hurts and the stride he took, you know, even the biggest Hurts supporters, I don't think saw this big of a stride coming. And then I think you got to go BG and the comeback he had at age 34 off a of torn Achilles getting a career high in sacks. Uh, he's just been dominant. And anytime he's mic'd up, it's my favorite piece of that was awesome. inside the NFL footage I, I can watch. That dude is hilarious. Uh, Hurts it has to be my number one. This has yeah. been out of nowhere. Two, 
I mean, he was the biggest villain in Philadelphia sports, Howie Roseman's comeback. Sure. I mean, it's unbelievable. This guy was the most hated figure, and it wasn't close. I couldn't no. come up with the number two. His resurgence of in Howie We Trust is unbelievable. Um, and I guess the third one is, uh, I don't know, man. I would say A.J. Brown has been just an unbelievable yeah. Watch. He's a beast. So, he's he's fun as hell to watch. Yeah, when they got him, I was like, dude, this is like getting To, and people just don't realize it. Like, yeah, he's that kind of impact on this team. But you know, Roseman, it's all impact. It's all like in Roseman, but going out and getting Linval Joseph and Sue because sure. like, and like just we're like going for it. That's the story. We're going for it. Like, and oh yeah, they have the number ten pick in the draft next year too. There we go. <laughs> we'll leave on a high note. Uh, Jamie Lynch Daily Odds Pod. Check that out on all your uh, podcasting platforms. Uh, obviously, Eagles, Niners. You got a feel? How do you? What is the Jamie Lynch crystal ball on Sunday? How's it all happening? Uh, I think the Eagles pull it out. I think it's going to be a hard fought game. I think Purdy's going to make a mistake that bites the Niners in a big spot. Uh, I think the Eagles are going to pull it out like 24-20, something around that. Uh, probably an under. I forget what that over-under is at. I think it's like 48 and a half maybe. Yeah. Um, so I think a slight under. I don't bet half right now. Okay. Um, I don't bet unders because they're no fun. Uh, but, yeah, I think the Eagles pull it out, and it's an under type of game, and it's going to be it's going to be an epic game. I think it's an all-timer. You like having the early game? I do, yeah. Because if the uh, – and not you know not that we're saying, but if they lost the game, are you going to? Oh, watch then you have no interest in the second game, <laughs> right? Are you hanging yeah. around for the game? No. Yeah, I probably. Do? Are you a post game guy? Do you go like post game stuff? Depends on the game. Last week I did. Uh, I had the Sixers on one TV and Sirianni talking his smack up there on the other. So that was one I checked out. I listened to so many post games in my life that I kind of uh, they went mute to me. Um, so yeah, it has like, to be a big team. game. When the team loses, I, you want to go post game because you want to get the answers. When they're fourteen sure. to three, I, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> they won. I'm on to the next. You know, so I don't know. All right, Jamie Lynch, this was fun. We'll have to do it again. Uh, hopefully, I'll be in Arizona. Uh, nice. Hopefully, see the Eagles. And, Very uh, nice. We'll see. Um, all right, that's Jamie. Yeah, Lynch. thanks for having me on, Mike. Yeah, man, we'll do it again. Thanks, bud. All right, see ya. All right, Jamie Lynch, everybody here on Believe in the Eagles. We appreciate him jumping on board. There you go. You get a little insight from Jamie, big Philadelphia radio guy. He's been in the market for a while. Get some thoughts there. We share a lot of cool thoughts there. Uh, hopefully, we'll do another one before now and the start of the game on Sunday. We'll have reactions and more. Check out the Colin Thompson conversation on this Believe in Eagles podcast on the YouTube channel or any of your podcasting platforms. Uh, Colin Thompson breaks down the matchups in the game. Check that out uh, right here on Believe in Eagles. All right, everybody, that's it for me. We'll be back later on with more Believe in the Eagles. Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe.